Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. In this video, I'm going to talk more about the math behind rocket stability. If you've seen the other video, you know how to do it uh, simply. Uh, here we're going to talk a little bit about the math. So I've got here a 2 to 1 scale drawing of a model rocket. You can see here I've got all the dimensions, all the linear dimensions are in blue. All of the areas are in red and distances are in orange. So what you do is you first look at your rocket from the side, from pick a side, and then you project it onto a surface. That projection has an area. If you calculate the centroid of this area, you can figure out where the center of pressure of your rocket's going to be. So this is what we're doing right here. You've got a triangle here that's 2 by 1. So obviously 1 half base times height. So the area of this triangle is 1. You've got this segment here of the body, which is just a rectangle. It's 11 inches long by 1. So its area is 11. We come down here, the area of this little trapezoid tail cone here um, is the average of the bases times the height. That only ends up being 7 sixteenths of a square inch, really, really small, almost negligible in our case. And then you've got the fins here, which are two inches tall. They've got a one inch tip, and they are an inch and a half uh, in span. So you have two and a quarter inches there, uh, square inches, I mean, times two. So you get all your areas. What you've got to do to make, sure, to make it easy for yourself is to break it up into uh, areas that you know, which is pretty much triangles and rectangles. It, those are really easy to do. So we take this fin here and we're going to break it up between a triangle and a rectangle and calculate their areas separately. Now, we've got all our areas. We have to find where the center, the geometric center of all those areas lies so that we can calculate the centroid of the whole thing. Well, there's tables online. Wikipedia has a bunch of a list of centroids if you just look that up. For any triangle, the centroid is one-third of the way up from its base. Well, it's too high, so one-third of two is two-thirds, but we're measuring from the nose cone. You pick a distance and you measure all your distances from there so that you have consistency and then the math works out right. So in our case, uh, we need to subtract two-thirds from here, so our centroid distance for our triangle is 1.3, one and a third. Now, we come down here and we have to take care of this rectangular section. The centroid of any rectangle is just in the middle of the rectangle. This piece here is 11. Ordinarily, that would be half of that, which is 5.5. However, we have to account for the 2 inches that we've already offset our rectangle from the measuring datum up there. So, the center of this is at 7.5. We do the same thing. Uh, well, let's go ahead and do our little trapezoid here at the end. It's almost negligible. We're going to go ahead and include it. The centroid of this, it's got a uh, fairly screwy formula. Here it is, A, B, and H. H over 3 times the whole thing of 2A plus B over A plus B. Well, that works out to be a little under a quarter. So we take this plus this. Now, one thing to note here, this and this are flipped. So we have to measure from the big side in our case, which is what we're doing. So we go ahead and measure down because our, the big side on our trapezoid here is on top. So we end up with 13.2 as a distance for here. I went ahead and rounded down to one decimal place. The fins, here you've got a rectangle. That's easy enough to do. We know that we're coming down. It's 13 inches to right here to the base of the fins. That's 13 inches. Well, we've got to come back up half the distance of our rectangle, which the distance is 1, so we come up a half. 13 minus a half is 12.5. We do the same thing here. The base of this is now at 12. We have to come up one-third the height of this triangle, which is 1. We come up a third, so we have 11.7 because we have to lose 0.3. So we have all of our areas and all of our uh, centroid distances, which is what we need to calculate this. Instead of forces, we're using areas, so, but it all makes sense. So the sum of the moments over the sum of the areas, in our case, moments, we're just taking, instead of a force, uh, we're just taking an area. So 1.3 times 1, 7.5 times 11, 11, 7, 3 quarters, you get all this. Now, one thing to note here 
is you have to multiply your each fin by two, which is what I did here. You've got the triangle portion and the rectangular portion times two because we have two of them. So we do all that, we add all those up, and then we divide that by the total area of our figure here, which ends up being 16 and 15 sixteenths square inches. That gets you 8.54. So measuring down from here, we come down 8.54. So the center of pressure of our rocket is 6, 7, 8 and a half. Center of pressure of this rocket is right here. I don't know where the center of gravity is of this rocket because that depends on lots of other things. But that's exactly where the center of pressure is going to be. Now, there's one little thing that could catch you. This rocket I drew has four fins. This rocket over here only has three, which is a very common number of fins to have. When you project this area onto a uh, flat plane, you don't get the full length of your fin here that's projected down here. You only get uh, fin length times the cosine of 60. So you only get actually three quarters here. If you calculate it with the full length of your fin, you'll get a false sense of stability. So make sure to uh, calculate this area here if you have uh, three fins, or if you use five, you'll have a different number and everything. But three and four are the most common, so that's the example I used. Because you might want to make sure that you uh, definitely go conservative on your stability here. Anyway, I hope that kind of helps explain things a little bit. Uh, it's really not that hard. We're just breaking things down into simple shapes, finding the centroids, Take the sum of all of the forces, in our case, all the areas times the distance over the areas. We get our number, and it's right here. And hopefully, this is behind the center of gravity. If it is, we're going to be stable. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.